Hey guys, welcome in for our second Shark Week session for 2022. Thanks for coming in again. As always, my name is Keith here with the Shark Indicators team. We've been involved in the Ninja Trader ecosystem since 2011, actually early 2012, and this is our 10-year anniversary. Just wanted to throw that out there, really exciting that this is our 10-year anniversary in the ecosystem. We provide tools like Bloodhound and Blackbird that help traders be more productive and in control of their own trade systems. We're always looking for ways to add to the trader's toolkit, and this webinar is part of that mission. Of course, before I pass it off, let's take a quick look at the risk disclosure. Futures, foreign, uh, foreign currency, and options trading contain substantial risk and is not for every investor. Be careful. And past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Phil Antonson develops trading systems for retail traders at Lucrum Trading Systems. He specializes in quantitative analysis and algorithmic trading. He earned a Bachelor of Science in Finance and Economics from the University of Wisconsin and is a full-time technical trader. So with that, Phil, you can uh, unmute, share your screen, and we can get started. All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you all very much for joining me here today. My name is Phil Antonson of Lucrum Trading Systems. And today in this presentation, we are going to take a look at the importance of diversification through system and market review. So with that, we'll be covering why diversification is important for all traders, and that includes automated traders alike. We'll then go into a breakdown of portfolio building and the various methods that are used. After that, we'll take a look at how system design impacts diversification. Then we will look at our showcasing our new three automated system package for use with Ruby and Bloodhound. Then after that, we will look at some of the additional services in system development and deployment that Loop Remote has to offer. And at the very end of this presentation, one of the attendees will be winning a free lifetime license of the Ruby system. If you happen to already own the Ruby system and win, you will then get the, the new automated system package. So a little bit about Lucum Trading Systems, if you're not familiar, is that we are a provider of both discretionary and automatic trading tools for the NinjaTrader platform, as well as a trading education and system development consulting company. We are objectively oriented to providing our customers with the resources and tools necessary to empower profitable trading. The guy behind the scenes is me, Phil Antonson. I'm a trader of over 16 years. I was a hedge fund analyst and trader specializing in the metals and energy sectors. I went to the University of Wisconsin for finance and economics. I'm the founder of Primario Capital Asset Management Company, and I currently live in Fort Myers, Florida. So I've been trading for uh, over half my life now. I started at a relatively young age. It was something that fascinated me, and I did nothing but read books and study about different approaches that various traders had found success in. And it was very quick that I learned that technical trading was what I wanted to emphasize on. So in my early years, I built out some logic role-based systems and was doing quite well. I had some successes and some follies. And I realized that even if you have a role-based system, when there's real money, real profits and real losses on your hands, it's not that easy to always follow those rules. So I pivoted and I started to look more into the automated side of trading and to take the logic of these systems that I had developed as a rule-based trader and let the computers take over and they have a lot less emotions than I do. So the question in this presentation is why diversify? Diversification is the inherent distribution of risk and all systems will have various amounts of risk and diversifying the systems and the markets utilized in your trading has the capability to smooth equity curves and curb drawdowns. Successful diversification is reducing drawdowns by more than diluted returns. So diversification is, is obviously something that's not new. It's something that is well proven, well studied in basically anything in the investment realm. What I feel, however, is that people in the automated trading world don't put as much emphasis on diversification as they could or should. Those that are looking to do a single system on a single market is definitely doable. You're welcome to it. But I would you know, suggest that more as the hobbyist that wants to throw in some money and you know, see how it does every once in a while. But if you're serious about automated trading and building and growing your account, 
diversification is a cornerstone and should be implemented any way possible. And of course, with futures markets, the margin requirements are vast. Um, that's very well known. And, and it's understandable that some account balances aren't capable of handling you know, large amounts of markets, large amounts of systems, and large amounts of contracts. But thankfully, the, with the uh, growing industry of some of these micro contracts, you can then begin exploring diversification and exploring multiple systems without having severe impact on your capital. So with diversification, you need to understand that systems excel in different areas. <clears throat> and systems generally perform best in specific market conditions. You got trend following, swing trading, scalping, retracement, divergence, arbitrage, uh, all various trading strategies that perform differently depending on market conditions while all attempting to be to generate a profitable advantage. So what's interesting about these various systems is um, there's case studies of basically all of these different system styles to be successful. But the fact of the matter is they're generally going to only be successful in specific market conditions. There's always going to be a market cycle where they perform very poorly in. And if you have only one system that focuses on, on one, you might be in a great, uh, great period. The systems are doing well. But as soon as it turns around, you'll be left high and dry because it's not able to pick up the slack when the markets are in a condition that they just don't excel in. So sort of like uh, trend following back in the market collapse of uh, 2008, 2009, they made headlines because they did so well. They were capable of being uh, long and short. They were able to capture that long downward swing during the collapse, and they were fantastic. They were the outliers in the investment world because they were capable of benefiting on that period. Whereas most investments in general obviously did very poorly, and they weren't able to adapt to that market condition. Uh, trend following is um, one of the, the more well-known ones, and it's very well known that they also perform very poorly when it comes to sideways, uh, very high volatility uh, movements. They're just a little bit too slow to capture those large macro trends and leave themselves susceptible to the, yeah, that, that choppy sideways stuff where a system that is more in the uh, swing style that capitalizes more on those support and resistance level of that range bound trading does well in. So by switching it up and having multiple systems is able to uh, preserve your capital while also being able to limit the impact of some of the drawdowns generated from poor market conditions. Then moves into systems are not infallible and that no system will be profitable 100% of the time. And if you ever come across a system that claims to be 80, 90 plus percent profitable, that's typically gonna be a big red flag. And the reason for that is because systems that have that high level of profitability generally employ something that's referred to as a martingale strategy. And martingale essentially is a system that will continue to double down your position or double down on losing trades and will continue to double down until the blended price is low enough that a slight retracement in your initial direction's favor becomes profitable. And when you do a back test of something that employs a martingale system, it will more or less always look great because it's thinking that you have an infinite amount of capital. You're not gonna get margin calls. You're not gonna get automatically liquidated when you're 10 contracts deep and it's going against you. Um, so there's no crystal ball in trading. Uh, there's no veritable golden goose. There's not anything that you can press the go button and it's just gonna start turning out money. I wish that was the case, but if it was a case, the markets would be a lot different. Uh, so case in point here is a screenshot I took the other day of one of the systems that I employ in my managed futures. And this is something that I've been working on and testing for uh, about seven years now. And it's a system that I have the utmost confidence in. And you'll notice that even with a system that I feel is rock solid, there are going to be pretty substantial losses generated. So let's highlight some of these ones here. <clears throat> so we'll take this one, the ES, for example. 
that was a $44,000 loser. I mean, what the hell kind of system is this? It's junk. And if I were to be designing a system solely for the EOS, and I was solely testing in this period, I would have very quickly written it off. But because I've worked with the system and I know the logic behind it, and I know the logic is sound, I've grown the system out and have developed that confidence in knowing that it's not something that's a fluke, but it's designed to be able to withstand those because I'm not only diversified in having multiple systems, but I'm also diversified in having a portfolio of different futures markets. So when you look at this one, the two biggest ones are the ESYM. And as we jump into the next section, we'll know that markets behave differently and that aligned market industries commonly amplify performance resulting in higher overall balance volatility. And over leverage in like markets can be risky. So I pulled this chart off <clears throat> online and it's basically a correlation coefficient chart of a lot of the more popular futures markets. And I know it's very hard to see, the text is very small even for me, but I can outline them here. These are indexes. Oops, these are fixed income, We've got uh, currencies, uh, metals, agriculture, uh, and energy, so forth. Uh, but I want to make a point that the uh, different markets will have different levels of correlation. Obviously, the index markets are going to be very highly correlated. You know, as an example of the two highly losing markets was the YM and ES. Surprise, surprise, they're both indexes and they're both very highly correlated. But when we look at it compared to something like fixed income, they're highly counter correlated. So whereas when the indexes do good, when they're, they're having a bullish market, generally the fixed income is going to do poorly or have a bearish market. So by taking a, a sort of a macro look at all of the different correlations of these different industries, you could then sort of pick and choose and identify how to balance a portfolio that have uh, as loosely correlated to as many degrees as possible by having sort of a, a wide sprung net allows you to weather the storm of markets that are performing poorly and then capitalize on the ones that are doing well. And that's what I do in my managed futures is to cast a, a big net in the systems that I know will generally perform well that when there is those periods of drawdowns and periods of poor performance, either one of my other system is gonna pick up the slack or another market is. So now we're just gonna jump into uh, the Ruby system, which is Lucrum Trading Systems flagship product. Uh, I know some of you uh, may be familiar with what the Ruby system is, and it's gonna be a recap, and I apologize for the uh, repetitiveness, but for those that aren't, uh, Ruby is a visually oriented trading aid, which allows you to quickly and easily identify trading opportunities by systematically analyzing price momentum, breakout ranges, and deviations in price. This toolbox of trading resources provides visual cues as to when trading opportunities present themselves. And Ruby and Bloodhound get together very well because all of the components of the Ruby system have accessible outputs that you can use to create solvers to use within Bloodhound and create your different logic matrices. And that with Ruby and Bloodhound, I've created the Ruby system trio, which is three uh, independent systems to use with Ruby and Bloodhound. And we'll have the Fibonacci extension retracement, which is system one, an MMA crossover, which is system two, and the high-low runner, which is system three. So now I just want to go into uh, Ruby here, just kind of demonstrate what it looks like, how you can use it, and some of the different functionalities of it. So right here, I've got a uh, standard 10 minute uh, chart. And I'm going to go ahead and apply Ruby. And you do that just by simply going to indicators, uh, scroll down until you find LTS Ruby, and click apply. Hey, Phil, it looks like uh, we're still on your slideshow presentation. Oh, my apologies. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Let's and just a heads up, we couldn't see your cursor earlier. I think it, your point was, was clear, though. But yeah, just. Oh, uh, OK. I think I was up. capturing the window and not the screen. No worries. Thanks, Neil, for pointing that out. Yeah, thank you very much. And... 
I'm going to stop share and then reshare real quick. While you do that, I was actually about to ask in the chat if uh, I'm curious how many because uh, you guys came from different places to Shark Week. How many of you have actually used or at least heard of Bloodhound? I'm always curious about that. You can't see each other's answers, but uh, if you feel like answering in chat, that'd be pretty cool just for my curiosity. Go ahead, Phil. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, you're good. You, you can ask away. I'm, I'm troubleshooting right now, but I think I've got it figured out. Uh, Alex, yep, I've, I've been talking to him. He's got it. Uh, Brian has a license. Charles has a license or, or, ha or says yes anyway. Uh, Jason uses it. Uh, Nick is familiar but about to purchase. Okay, cool. Um, and John has heard of it. Okay, cool. Yeah, nice. just, just curious. Sam has both uh, Bloodhound and Blackbird. Awesome. Jan has nice. heard of it. Yeah, that's a, that's a, lot, a, good, of, a lot of people have have heard about it in the, in, in the industry. Yeah, it's, we've that's been a, around a, so long. <laughs> and it's a great investment. And I can attest to that as somebody who has built out hundreds of different trading systems. To have that ability to do it quickly, you're not having to go to a developer or program and, you know, having this big toilet paper list of all the different things that you want in this this program. It's so simple um, and I love it. It's able to rapidly prototype a bunch of different logics and test it quickly. So can you see my screen all right right now? Can you no, see just, uh, just blank right now yeah. as, if, as if there's no sharing going on. I see. Appreciate that guys. Actually, it's nice to hear many of you are at least familiar with it, then it just makes that much more, when you see someone's chart with the, the vertical stripes and the signals, you have some, some frame of reference of what the heck is going on. So, all right, I can see your chart and your mouse this time. Oh, perfect. Yeah, okay, my apologies. Thank you so much for pointing that out. I would have gone on for another half hour and <laughs> been on deaf ears or blind ears rather. Um, so yeah, okay, so we're here we've got the Ruby system applied to a chart. I can just show you a quick, uh, what that was. So I have it applied now. It's applied as an indicator. <clears throat> so removed, basic chart, Ruby applied. There we go. So there it is. Um, so Ruby itself is something that is obviously very visually oriented. You load it up and you can instantly see a little bit more clearly about what the overall price trending is doing. It's very important to point out that nothing within the Ruby system repaints. So when you load it up on a chart like this, you'll know that when the chart was updated in real time, these bars would have been all the same color as they are here. These signals would have generated at the location that they're indicated here. And yeah, it's, it's, it's nothing that's gonna be a surprise between whether you're running it in a live setting or a uh, testing in historical data. So just do a couple sort of features and rundowns of the uh, various components is we have things here like the trade trigger signals. And these are going to be the solid red or solid green, obviously indicated for uh, you know, an, an anticipation of a downward trend or anticipation of an upwards trend. And we also have a few of the extended signals. And these extended signals here uh, function in a multiple multitude of different ways. Whenever an extended signal is generated, it always needs to be in a favorable advantage from the initial signal and can sometimes be used as a way to scale into a position, uh, take profit because price has already moved in its favor, or as simply as a way to, to enter a trade altogether as just an entry signal. Um, the system, when the extended signals are generated, it's also sort of a cautionary as because price has moved in favor of the initial signal, price could you know, potentially become exhausted. It could become overbought or oversold and end up being uh, due for a reversal. Uh, these were a little bit more of a continuation and this one here ended up being a bit more of a call for the exhaustion at the top of this particular uh, spot here. So everything within Ruby is highly customizable. So you can tune it to your specific trading styles, the markets you're trading and timeframes. And many of these you can do with both the trend sensitivity and the trade trigger sensitivity, which will adjust not only the requirements and frequency of the signals generated, but also the, the sensitivity 
for the deviation in price uh, to paint whether or not it's going to be a magenta or a green uh, trending bar. So for this, just a quick example, default 18 will bring the trend sensitivity down to a five. And you'll see that there's a lot more of these gray bars that are generated between this run uh, because it's sort of looking at uh, much more rapid uh, price movement. It's a little bit less forgiving. So you're gonna have a lot more uh, reversals uh, indicated with, with a very low uh, trend sensitivity versus a higher 50. It's gonna be a lot more uniform, but it takes a lot bigger deviation in order for it to identify the next trending direction. Now we'll bring that back to 18. And similarly with the trade trigger sensitivity uh, value of five, you're gonna get a lot more of these trade trigger signals generated. It's gonna take a little less uh, price movement for these to, to trigger and signal. So you can see a lot more of the extended signals and a few more of the uh, initial entry signals. So let's bring that back to 10. Uh, so again, because this is not necessarily going to be very in-depth with Ruby, there's a lot more to it, but I'm not gonna cover it in this webinar. There are a number of different videos some previous webinars that I've done that will outline and explain uh, some of the different functionalities of Ruby in more detail, but I would like to cover the template that's included with, with um, Ruby that's used with Bloodhound. And this is the solver template, which has all of the accessible solvers uh, within that you can use with, with Ruby and Bloodhound. So just to jump through these real quick, is we have the things like the bar direction, which is going to generate an output, whether or not the bar direction is the, the pink or the green. Things like the MMA direction, entry trade signals, extended signals, MMA slope, which is a modified moving average, which uses linear regression to act as a fast moving uh, moving average. An EMA slope, which are slow moving EMA, which has a uh, underlying algorithm that depicts what the intensity of that direction is. So it will actually identify, uh, see, see this yellow here, yellow here, those are going to be um, based on the momentum of that particular moving average. So that's the slope. I've also got the direction, which will cycle out through those colors. Uh, things like the ATR, whether it's up above, above or below price. And pivot reversals, which is the range pivots, which is again, it's just gonna be a deviation in price between the highs and lows to establish these pivot points. These pivot points also can depict different uh, technical patterns that can form. This is just an example of the uh, descending channel here. And it's looking at the previous Oops, that was kind of a terrible straight line, but that it's basically painting a picture of a channel that's forming and those typically will have a bullish breakout. So I ended up sort of hitting it there, then breaking out and there it goes. Um, let's see if there's any more of the solvers. All right, this is the MMA price comparison, simply using that linear regression moving average in comparison to price. MMA slope inflection, uh, MMA price divergence, which is looking for uh, some severe divergences between price and that MMA. And last we have the new highs and lows, which is again, using the range pivots to identify when those range pivots have generated new highs and new lows. Um, the other ones are going to be components of the three systems. So these three systems were developed with in mind about the idea of diversification and to working with multiple systems to achieve multiple goals. And with these three systems, they all are expected to perform well, but some perform better in specific market conditions. And those are going to be the Fibonacci retracement entry, and this system is actually going to rely heavily on those trade trigger signals and the like exit of the Fibonacci retracement looks something like this. Now I'm obviously not going to go into the logic behind the system as that's for you to discover, um, but 
these are all going to be open logic and it's not going to be black hat. So you can actually look into the logic, see how it's working and have the capability to uh, interact and change and remove different components of it and tailor and, and tweak it to however you see fit. Next, we have the MMA crossover entry strategy. And the entries look like this. And may crossover exit. The high low run entry entries look like that. And the high low run exit looks like that. Um, so these systems all are looking at different things, and they're all different components of the Ruby system in order to uh, generate these various systems. And all of these systems are utilizing the default parameter settings within Ruby as to not give sort of a best case scenario. I'm not going to go and make these systems and curve fit the hell out of it and show you something that is gleamingly shiny. Um, the realistic aspect is it's a core logic, uh, core fundamental logics that build the systems. And then, like I said, depending on how you want to use these types of systems, you can then sort of tweak and tailor them to whatever timeframes and markets that you're using. And this uh, system package will also include a document which will break down what the systems are looking at, some of the key parameter values to manipulate the system and how they can be used. All right, so next, let's take a look at some of these system consulting services that Ruby offers. Uh, this is something that I, I feel is, is generally overlooked and something that many people don't think about when it comes to building and testing various automated systems. It's, a, it's generally going to be a very, very long road, something that has a lot of things that as a novice you might overlook. And this is a basically an assortment of different services to give you that confidence of transitioning from something that is in a testing phase into something that you can actually take into a live trading environment. And the first one of that is assessing system robustness. And this is a veritable stress test for your system where we look at the different parameter ranges, the markets that it's trading, and some time frame variations to look for the discrep or not the discrepancies, but the differences in performance by making some of these changes. And some of them can be minor changes and some of them can be rather severe. But basically what we're looking at is, uh, take for example, you have a uh, basic EMA crossover strategy. That's your strategy. And when you backtest it, a value of 10 looks fantastic. But when you backtest it on a nine or a value of 11, it's completely different. Uh, stuff like that is alarming because it means that there are components of the system that are going to be curve fit. And you might be looking at the wrong thing. You're testing on data that it's tailored specifically for that system at that parameter range. We also look at its performance against different markets. Again, using the correlation of different markets to see if there is a little bit of cohesion between the performances between like markets. Then we also can look at some time frame variations to see if the core logic is able to with withstand itself using different uh, time frames. And that leads into the proper optimization. It's very easy to go into the strategy analyzer, uh, plug in a bunch of different ranges, and optimize it, you know, go get a cup of coffee, come back, pick the best one and be like, oh, cool, I'm done. Uh, ultimately, that's a poor proper, pro poor proper optimization method and will ultimately cause your system to fail given the variability of future data. So what we do and we look at is employing something called a double blind data testing. And it looks something like this. So this is going to be a chart. We obviously have time on the x-axis. Here's your chart, woohoo. And we break it down into different sections. And what we do is we optimize on known data. And in this case, the known data is going to be this middle section. So we optimize the system. We generally optimize on things like the uh, consistency of profitability, equity curve, we look more for risk aversion rather than optimizing for pure profitability that in the long term generally performs better. So say we've got uh, this 
data here that we can see. That's supposed to be an eyeball. And we optimize on it. And we look for something that performs well. So say that the equity curve looks something like that. Great. And now we unleash those parameter ranges within that optimized known data, and we open it up to the blind. And what we want to see is a continuation. We want to see that equity curve perform consistently across this new data, which the system is completely blind to. It's something that is unknown and is the best way to represent the unknown of uh, future market performance in, in live data. What we don't want to see is one that comes out of the gate terribly. Oh, look, it's back to our optimized data. Looks great. And then as soon as it exits, it does poorly again. So we do these in order to give the confidence that a system is not overly curve fit to the specific data that you're testing on. Then we look at the multi-market success. Uh, again, that's testing on variable vari variations of either like markets or different markets just to confirm that the robustness of that system is capable of performing in different conditions. And um, uh, yeah, again, giving that, that confidence that the logic behind the system is sound to move forward with. Uh, next is something that is just basic risk assessment. Uh, it can be something as simple as, as doing a Monte Carlo simulation, which uh, takes your trade log data, randomizes it, and then does a bunch of simulations, bunch of samplings of it, and it spits out uh, something that looks, oops, looks like this. So we have price on the y-axis, start at zero. And as it spits out the simulations, as it randomizes your trade data, it's going to kind of look like this. As it randomizes it, it's going to sort of spread out what the overall consistency and expectations of that particular system is. And what we don't want to see is just a few in the profitability aspect and a whole bunch that could be down here. Uh, ultimately, you want a system that is capable of having a, a low assessed risk in something that can perform well, even if there is a string of inherent drawdowns or poor performances. And talking about earlier with the example of the Monte Carlo, or not the Monte Carlo, excuse me, the Martingale style systems, the simulations and the back tests within NinjaTrader don't necessarily take account of intra-trade drawdowns, which can be severe, especially if you're holding trades for a longer period of time, or you have a system that actually uh, adds to a position at any given time, because that can obviously be over leveraged and be a, a huge detriment to your account. So we just take a look at that some of the intra-trade drawdowns and see exactly what type of risk you're actually incurring before you actually exit a trade. And next is just further system improvements through trade logic adjustments and system review. Uh, it's basically using my experience with system design and to see if there's anything that I feel like your system can be uh, adjusted, added, removed in order to have something that provides a little bit more robustness to your system and it, or improves it in other ways. Uh, the last one, which uh, is also extremely important, is the system sign signal to execution discrepancies. And this is something that a lot of people just don't know about or just aren't completely aware of, is that the, there are always going to be discrepancies between the price that your signal is generated at versus the actual execution price in a live market. So we measure the assumed slippage between backtested and live trades. And some of those reasons for some severe cases of discrepancy can be because of the bar type that you're using. If you're using some Ranko bars that have a hindsight bias when you're backtesting, can give you a full bar advantage um, for every single trade. And obviously that's not gonna be realistic. And as soon as you unleash something that in the live market, it's gonna quickly blow up. Uh, markets with lower volume well, could have a higher bid ask spread, which could have your executions at, at a un unexpected uh, price point. Sometimes the order execution management that you employ in your system might have some discrepancies, especially for systems that are always in the market, um, depending on whether you're using market orders or limit orders. Those are all aspects that can have a variation in terms of what you would actually expect. And then last is 
using poor or incomplete historical data. Uh, this is a, a relatively common one, is just the inability to have access to a large amount of good historical data. And if you're testing a system in a very small window, you're more likely to not see some of the uh, discrepancies and the failures that it might have in other periods. So this screenshot here on the right is a, a software that I had developed which monitors what the system's uh, signal price was as well as the actual execution price was with the brokerage. And sometimes they will be the same. You know, this, this particular one here, it was able to generate a signal and enter the market at the same price. Uh, this one here had a discrepancy, 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 discrepancy. Oh, the same, the same, a little bit of discrepancy, a little bit of discrepancy. So there's always going to be that level of slippage. And within the NinjaTrader's backtest capabilities, there's only a way to add a static one tick, two tick of slippage. And while it's good to account for, there's a lot of different uh, factors that can impact it. So what we do is we take your system and we run it in an account that actually uses a live order book. So it's simulated, but because it uses a live order book from a major broker, it's able to match it as best it can to give you a much better sense of what you'll actually expect. And then once we have enough data, we can extrapolate the expectancies of, is this system going to incur a detrimental amount of slippage? And in many cases, if you are not factoring in a slippage of one, uh, it can easily uh, ruin a system's capability of profitability. All right, so that, yeah, that's some of the different system consulting services that Lucrum offers. Um, you know, if, if it's something that interests you, I would encourage you to reach out and we can do things either by hour or by project to look at some of these different factors just to make sure that you have the confidence from transitioning from something simulated to a live environment. Because if you do it incorrectly or there's things that you've overlooked, um, you know, it can easily cost you thousands of dollars within a few days of trading, um, you know, based on, on some of these follies. So now we're just going to look at uh, what you get with the Ruby system. So it's the Ruby system for both NinjaTrader 7 and 8. I know that NinjaTrader 7 is quite antiquated at this point, but there's always a couple people that still use it. So if you are, Ruby will still work with it. It also includes the Vision Renko bar type, which I didn't touch on, but I'll, I will bring that up quick. There we go. Uh, so this is a chart of the Vision Renko bar type. This is a bar type that's included with Ruby and they were developed around the same time. So I just included it. Some people really like the Ruby system using Renko based charting. But what makes this Renko different than others is, excuse me, that it uses a one tick offset for each new bar formation. And it also uses tick level data to actually monitor and account for different gaps in price because Renko typically will assume that price is completely fluid without any gaps, which is not always going to be the case. You know, case in point, you got price gaps here. It looks like there is price gap here. You know, there's, there's times at which price is, is not fluid and those need to be accounted for because if you're designing a system that trades on a Renko and it doesn't factor those in, you could be misrepresenting what your performance could be. So it's, um, again, included with Ruby, but you absolutely do not have to use it with, with Ruby, but again, that's included. Uh, it also includes a comprehensive use and trading manual, which breaks down all of the different components of the system, how you can use it, some example trading styles, and uh, you know some other tidbits to get the most out of, out of the system. It also includes a Bloodhound template that has um, many of the accessible outputs are already done for you in the Bloodhound solvers. And then it includes free updates, free support as per usual. And then if you choose to purchase Ruby based on this webinar, you will then get a one hour of free setup consulting, uh, which allows me to understand what your objectives are. And I can go in and screen share with you and, and sort of 
uh, get you pointed in the right direction, what to look for, what sort of settings to uh, adjust the system towards, just to get the most out of it and sort of expedite that learning curve process. And then with the three system package, uh, it's the three systems that we cover very briefly for use with Ruby and Bloodhound. It does require both Ruby and Bloodhound to use. It has open logic, it's not Black Hat, so you can actually go in and see what the logic matrix is of all these systems. They're all very uh, basic systems. It's not going to be a spider web of all these different crazy things and crazy interactions. That's not the objective for these. It was essentially to give you an idea of how the different components of the system can create unique systems with unique strengths and unique weaknesses um, in sort of a uh, altogether uh, package here. It also includes documentation of the system operations. It explains what the systems are looking at, what they do, what their strengths and weaknesses are, as well as the key parameters within Ruby that the solvers are using that adjust the systems and system performance. And that uh, also free updates and free support for that as well, like everything that Lucrum offers. We also do a few Ruby and Bloodhound offers. And if you wish to choose both Ruby and Bloodhound, there are some package deals that you can find on my website at lucrumtradingsystems.com forward slash webinar. And as we move to the next slide, that link is going to uh, remain in the bottom right. So you can check that out because it's also going to include a promo code SIWebinar03 to get $100 off the Ruby system. So now we're going to do a uh, random draw for the attendees. And what I want you to do if you're the winner, I'm gonna, I'll write down your name and just send me an email saying that you won uh, along with your NinjaTrader machine ID and I'll get that sent out to you. So the random person is uh, Jan, J-A-N, last name not available. Congratulations, you are the winner. Uh, if you happen to already own the Ruby system, again, you will then get the three system package. So congratulations on that. And as we wrap up, we're just going to move into the Q&A section where all will try to tackle as many questions as I see. So feel free to go ahead and uh, type any questions that you may have had during the presentation uh, in that Zoom Q&A. And Phil, should I have ask Jan to put in like her email address into, into the chat that only we can see? So oh yeah, that's correct. If, if only we can see it, yeah, absolutely. Feel free to uh, send your email within the uh, chat there. Cool, there it is. Uh, I put in the link to your website um, in chat. You might get, I, I don't know if this was just a temporary thing, but you might get a message from your browser saying it's its insecure, but I have confirmed that is the right link. It just doesn't have a, an, a certificate, but it's the right place to go. Oh, for the, the Lucrum? Yeah. webinar page yeah, yeah. um you seem to put the http uh s um but I, I promise you the website is secure um any payment processing is, is very secure uh you just need to do the https if you're concerned okay i think um, it was a, a temporary thing because it defaulted back but just want to let people uh, know in case that they get that message. okay good thank you all right so rick p asked um I've been using Renko for a while with good results. Will I be able to backtest my Renko system? Uh, it definitely depends on which Renko bar you're using. Uh, the default Renko with the NinjaTrader is absolutely not backtest friendly, and it will generally show you a hindsight bias when it comes to uh, performance, and you will need to seek out uh, one of the reputable backtestable Renko bars uh, to use. Um, Vision Renko obviously is one of them, and if you wish to uh, just purchase Vision Renko itself, that is made available on my website. All right, we'll give another couple minutes. Uh, not seeing any any questions come through, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. No, no, check, but, check the chat, check the chat. We're so used to using the Q&A, which is oh, okay. a good place to put questions, but a lot of people have been using the chat. That's right. Yeah. 
And in case anyone's wondering, just to, to remind you, you can only see your own messages. So it's, it's not a dead chat room, I promise. <laughs> all right, there we go. So we'll work, work backwards here. Uh, uh, Sam, I don't see the three system bundle on your, on your site, like more info on those. Uh, I haven't made a, a full on page with them. It's available within the store, but it is not going to, oops. Uh, it's made available on the store, but there's no page for it. Uh, if you'd like some more information on that, I can, I can provide that for you. Uh, Rochester Mortgage Guy, uh, I don't see any system consulting on your website. Uh, it's, it's very case by case. There is a link to the consulting overview in the upper right hand of the uh, navigation bar, which will have a consulting page. Uh, depending on your specific needs and what you're looking for, uh, reach out to me directly and we can sort of work out what the best plan of action would be. Uh, Jason asked, does Ruby work best on time charts or will it work on range stick charts as well. Uh, it works uh, exceptionally well on, on either and both, uh, whether or not you want to use a range, uh, Ranko tick-based chart, you're absolutely free to do and it'll still work well. Uh, Brian Bayer asked, are there optimal parameters for each symbol and market? Uh, there are uh, in, in the loosest answer, but it's not going to be something that is uh, easily defined. At, really, really changes depending on what the actual logic of the system is gonna be. And um, best and optimal is, is very subjective. So uh, loose, yes, but not really. Uh, does Ruby require Bloodhound? Uh, it, it absolutely does not. It, it's a standalone software that operates as an indicator within NinjaTrader. But if you're looking to automate Ruby or any components of it, you will then be required to use Bloodhound. Uh, Michael asked about uh, 503 error with my website. Uh, I apologize for that. I am looking at changing hosts because they are terrible. And if there is a lot of people on it, which there may be right now, uh, it overloads it. I apologize uh, by refreshing, checking, um, 30 seconds a minute, it'll come back. All right, don't see any yet. That was a quick one. I, I, I sped run my presentation <laughs> that one, but uh, I think I got everything across. And, and again, if, if there's anything that you want to ask me, you know, trading is something that I'm very passionate about. I've been doing it forever. And um, I, I'm, I just love helping people, especially when it comes to uh, automated trading. It can be a very treacherous road. It's fun to get into, but there's a lot of things out there that can uh, be deceptive, uh, for lack of better words. And I, I'm just happy to share my experiences and my transition into being somebody that started as a hobby and moved into a professional career. And now is, you know, doing manage features, you know, it's an exciting journey and uh, happy to share it. Uh, just a couple uh, more questions rolled in. Was Ruby written in Bloodhound? Uh, nope, Ruby is a standalone uh, NinjaScript program and the uh, it's designed so that the outputs or all the elements within it can be accessed with Bloodhound. Uh, what system do you use for backtesting? Uh, many. <laughs> I've got many different uh, systems that I, that I backtest and, and test. Um, but ultimately, as, as a default, using the uh, NinjaTrader's backtest functionality is, is the, uh, the first step. Uh, Ruby template for Bloodhound or all the solvers included? Yep, the, uh, the template that I showed. Uh, and all the, the solvers that I walked through are going to be everything that you would get from the default Bloodhound template, but it's not going to contain the logic and additional solvers that are replicated for the three systems. Brian, how many are at the company? It's just me. It started as a, as a hobby, a system that I developed for my own personal use. 
uh, shared them with some people and, and they liked it, recommended that I, I uh, offer it to others and, and I did. I've just been sort of um, working at Lucrum as not really a side job, but it's worked in tangent with my professional money management side. Uh, what data do you use? Uh, I use uh, a few different data. I've used Rhythmic, uh, Kinetic. I've used various brokers data through like interactive brokers and stuff like that. So I've got a breadth of different data that I test just to confirm the, the consistencies in, in whatever I'm testing. Did you, uh, I can't remember if you did a Rick's question further up. Uh, about using Ranko to back test. Oh, yep. Yeah. No, he was the the only one that did it in the uh, actual question and answer part. Okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, those uh, the default Ranko for Ninja Trader. Yeah, not back testable. Wouldn't recommend it. Uh, it's not going to be remotely accurate to live, um, but reputable back testable Rankos uh, can be. And just to plug our stuff, in case you didn't, we do make a reputable back testable Ranko bar, which allows you to turn off the smoothing, which gets around the ninja flaw with backtesting. Yep, <laughs> the ninja flaw is a good way to put it. <laughs> All right, well, I think that that does it. Um, again, if you have any other questions that I happen to miss, or if you have any questions that pop up later on in your evening, please feel free to give me a call or send me an email and happy to help out. Again, thank you to Shark Indicators as always for hosting this event. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of Shark Week, the rest of your summer, and I hope you guys tune in to the, uh, I believe it's a Friday presentation, which they'll unleash the update for uh, Blackbird 2.0, which uh, should be good stuff. It's great software. Um, didn't cover really any of Bloodhound or Blackbird today, but uh, it's something definitely to watch for. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful summer. And I'll see you all next time. Hey, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, always appreciate you coming in, uh, Phil. You always get lots of somehow people are just so excited to ask you tons of questions about your stuff. So you must be doing something right. I love questions. <laughs> I love answering them. Just like this morning, just wanted to, to remind anyone who wasn't here this morning, uh, if you're on our website uh, or if you're on the Shark Week website, uh, you can click on schedule to see who's coming up. Um, like I said earlier, not every talk is for every person, but tons of people do watch every single one. You're welcome to. I uh, just wanted to mention the next one is tomorrow afternoon at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and it is Dave Nutson. This will be his first talk with Shark Indicators. Just recently kind of hooked up with us. And, and uh, yeah, I'm curious to see what he... Uh, what sort of stuff he's going to talk about. So yeah, come on back tomorrow afternoon. And uh, like Phil mentioned, of course, we will be uh, introducing Bloodhound 2.0 on Friday. I'm going to keep mentioning that because we've been working on this technically for, we've been talking about some of the features that are in this for like eight years <laughs> and working on it hard for like the last year. So I'm just going to keep hammering that in and, and until you guys actually show up. So anyway, <laughs> have a great day. Thanks a lot, Phil. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.